Naruto and Boruto are similar in many ways, but in a majority of ways, they couldn't be more different. Naruto was always neglected, and this caused him to crave attention and to be almost overly protective of the bonds he could make. On the other hand, Boruto was a brat, and he never needed to struggle for any attention. He was the son of the hero of the leaf, as well as Hokage. He never needed to struggle for the love he got, and as such, he became slightly spoiled. I won't deny the growth Boruto has displayed in the series, but he was a real work in progress. He's far more mature than Naruto, but early on didn't take being a shinobi seriously. He was prideful and had no care for teamwork, believing the only power required would be his own. And when his power was not enough, he wouldn't be above using something considered cheating to achieve his goals. While Boruto eventually grows out of this, the start is important because we're going to be making Boruto and Naruto trade places. Boruto will take Naruto's place in part 1 and 2 of the original Naruto series, while Naruto takes on Boruto's place in the Next Generation series. Let's see how it affects the series from this point on. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers in all of our accounts by the end of the year. Our story starts where you would expect. One October night, about 12 years prior to the main story of Naruto, a baby cries out after birth, left alone as its parents lay dead. On its stomach is the 8 trigram seal that is proof of the seal placed on it. That seal is meant to hold something in, something large, something hateful. Was it the baby's fault that its mother and father had perished in battle? Was it the baby's fault that the village was practically destroyed by a massive creature of mountainous proportions? No, this wasn't the baby's fault. All it did was come into the world. But the villagers of Konoha don't see it that way. They look at that baby and all they see are the faces of those they loved trampled over by the nine-tailed fox. As it grows from infant to toddler and from toddler to adolescent, their resentment grows to anger and from anger to hatred. This child is Boruto, and he is the Ninetales Jinchuriki. Now, as Boruto grows, he will experience all of the hatred Naruto once felt, but his reaction to it might be a bit different. He takes it with a strange maturity, but it really gets on his nerves. Unlike Naruto, Boruto finds himself crying quite a bit over it. He has no friends or family, and nobody loves him. Nobody even seems to care about him. If anything, the people seem to hate him and wish he weren't even alive. He also begins to hate the villagers and resent them as well. He would hear the whispers in his head from an unknown place. Wouldn't it be easier if they were gone? Wouldn't it be easier to destroy them? Boruto pushes these thoughts from his head. After all, he is Boruto. He's not a cold-blooded killer. Boruto believes he might be able to earn their respect if he were to become a shinobi, so he enrolls in the academy. He's quick to pick up shadow clones, but they aren't anything special. It's not like he can cast a thousand of them. Boruto might still get approached by Mizuki, and I don't know what he could offer him. Naruto needed shadow clones, and so he stole the scroll of seals to accomplish that, just as Mizuki wanted. Given that Boruto can already make a shadow clone, I doubt he would really need the scroll of seals. In fact, Boruto is one of those who graduates, so I don't see Mizuki approaching him. Due to this, Boruto would not learn about his being the Ninetales Jinchuriki until later. Boruto is placed on Team Kakashi alongside Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha. Neither Boruto nor Sasuke get along very well. They're both heavily prideful. They might have a few, or a lot, of disagreements, but this doesn't sour the team completely. Boruto, unlike Naruto, also possesses no attraction towards Sakura. This leads to Team 7 functioning somewhat better, actually, save for the generally verbal squabbles that Boruto and Sasuke get into. Kakashi introduces himself, and no prank is pulled, which is a good sign. He asks his team what their names are, what they like, dislike, and what their goals and aspirations are. Sakura's wouldn't change, nor would Sasuke's, but Boruto, on the other hand, would say something different. He would likely start with a critical statement over Sakura and Sasuke's dreams, and would simply state that he wishes to be a shinobi in hopes of earning everyone's respect. Sasuke would likely say something sarcastic here in return for Boruto's statement, and Sakura would agree with it. Kakashi would suddenly realize that this isn't looking to be as easy as he thought. He worries that Team 7 won't mesh, and that they won't be able to learn teamwork. This would be where the bell test takes place. During this test, Boruto plays it smart, and Sasuke displays his prodigious nature, which almost get the bells twice. However, at the end of the day, no one on Team 7 displayed any teamwork, which leads to them failing. 
Normally, Kakashi would send them back to the academy and abandon the team, but he senses high potential here, so he gives them the answer. It's all about teamwork. If you want the bells, you'll have to work together for them. Boruto questions how they can when there are only two bells. Someone won't be able to graduate. Kakashi tells them that it's not up to them to determine that and to try again tomorrow. For the rest of the night, Team Not Yet 7 would discuss this and attempt to formulate a plan. By the next day, they get back to Kakashi and he asks who will be the sacrificial lamb so that the others may graduate. Boruto would inform them that the entire team came to the conclusion that there wouldn't be a sacrificial lamb and that they all either pass or would be sent back. Whatever the conclusion may be, Team 7 sticks together. Kakashi's pleased with this answer and decides to let them join his team. He would tell them that what they just decided on was exactly what he was looking for. Team unity and caring for each other. He automatically passes them. From here, they do odd jobs as usual until the Land of Waves arc. During the Land of Waves arc, Boruto would more than likely freeze, much like Naruto, but he would get his bearings fast and likely respond with a Shadow Clone. Probably wouldn't do much against them, but it would buy enough time for Kakashi and Sasuke to step in. They would deal with the Demon Brothers. While Sasuke would still chastise him for freezing, he would commend him for his instincts as a shinobi. Kakashi would agree. Continuing on, they would be stopped by Zabuza. Here I could see Boruto displaying more confidence. Over confidence to a point, nearly challenging Zabuza openly. Kakashi would have to reel him back in. Zabuza would make note of Boruto's guts, taking some interest but would focus more on the legendary copy ninja. Most of Zabuza and Kakashi's battle remains the same up until the water prison. Sasuke and Boruto would team up to attack, likely probing his defenses with kunai. Sasuke would probably release a great fireball jutsu which Boruto would use as cover to get around Zabuza to attack from behind, but his mistake is that he thinks Zabuza doesn't know he's there. Zabuza would grab Boruto and commend him for his guts, but he would tell him he was foolish. He would try to snap Boruto's neck, only for the shinobi to suddenly puff out of existence, showing that it was but a shadow clone. Boruto comes around with a kunai, attempting to stab Zabuza, only for Zabuza to be required to jump back to avoid it, letting the water prison go, which would allow Kakashi to escape. It would be now that Haku would appear to kill Zabuza with his senbon, which Kakashi would note is a particularly strange weapon for a hunter nin to use. Too precise, and does little damage unless it hits a particular list of spots. From that, he begins to suspect that Zabuza is not dead, but Kakashi feels like he himself is. Remember, Kakashi hasn't changed. He still used his Sharingan and overused his Chakra. This means he's going to be out for a little while, and during this time, he wishes to teach his students Chakra control. This is something Kakashi excels at. Kakashi Harake doesn't have a particularly deep well of Chakra, but he can still use high-level techniques because he can control his Chakra to a point that he only ever uses as much Chakra as is required, which allows him to fight longer than even those with deeper wells. Sakura would still be as proficient as before, and Sasuke would continue to have problems. I could see Boruto basically face-planting into a tree. He'd have very little progress, sort of like Naruto did at first. He would seem like he wants to give up. He would complain about there being far better ways to climb trees that don't require chakra. Sakura would coach him a little and help him understand what he's doing. That being said, he actually masters it far faster than Naruto would. And due to Boruto's lack of infatuation for Sakura, Sakura might be more open to it as he doesn't threaten her own dreams. Much like before, Inari would exclaim that heroes don't exist. You would too if you were his age and witnessed the only heroic father figure in your life get slaughtered by a ninja mafioso in the most brutal of ways. But unlike Naruto, Boruto would not bite back. Boruto wouldn't look down on him or anything, but he would merely ignore Inari. He might whisper under his breath, not with that attitude. It wouldn't be that much longer until Inari's mother, Tsunami, would get him and take him back to his room. Boruto would scoff. What's his problem? It would be then that Tazuna would mention the history of Inari's father, Kaiza. And yes, I consider him his father. Family is more than just blood. He would recount how much Inari loved him and how truly heroic Kaiza always was. But then he would tell him how Gato had murdered him to make a symbol out of him. Boruto would lower his head. Sheesh, this Gato guy is the scum of the earth. Tazuna would continue telling them how it was Gato who didn't want the bridge created because that would mean it would be easier for the Land of Waves to trade, and that would make Gato's business start to sink in the water that the bridge crossed over. Boruto would nod in understanding and would say that he would make sure that this bridge got made. The next day, while they go to the bridge to help cover its creation, Inari and Tsunami are captured. We get the same battle against Haku and Zabuza as you would remember. However, when Sasuke is seemingly killed, Boruto loses control of himself and that allows the Ninetales energy to pour out, giving him the same slitted eyes and deeper pigmentation on the cheeks as well as claws and sharper teeth. 
However, instead of Boruto powering up, he almost seemingly sleeps. In the place of his consciousness is a being of deeper voice. Still trapped, but I'm able to move now. Interesting. Haku would almost seem a little confused at this odd shift. Suddenly, Boruto would jump up and smash through the ice mirrors with his chakra. Haku is sent flying. Before he can rise though, he's met with Boruto, who forms a tailed beast ball in his hand and raises it to face Haku. Boruto would display a nefarious grin on his face. All of you shinobi think you can control anything that comes your way. From a village you claim as your own, to a bridge you don't want created. You need to learn to accept that there are some things that can never be controlled. Some things refuse to be controlled. And with that, Boruto releases the tailed beast ball, completely eradicating Haku and a fair portion of the bridge. Sakura is terrified by this new strangeness in Boruto. Even Zabuza and Kakashi are startled by it, but that doesn't stop Boruto from attacking them both. Facing off against Zabuza, Boruto, under the complete control of Kurama, would speak. You possess a deep darkness in your heart. The world has poured all of its hatred into you to make you a monster of its own creation. Even still, your hatred pales in comparison to mine. Boruto Rama would appear to transform a bit more. He would take on a partial transformation that would give Boruto the ears of a fox and a fox's tail. His hair would stand on end in a more bestial matter and he would get dark lining around his eyes. Red fur would almost seem to form in his arms as his legs shifted shape a bit. Boruto makes short work of Zabuza and then would turn to target Kakashi. For the longest time, Kurama has the edge on Kakashi until Kakashi lifts his headband to reveal his Sharingan. He would cast a Genjutsu over Kurama to force him to sleep. Kurama would see it and groan, his last moments of consciousness allowing him to openly curse the Dojutsu that had taken control of his body all those years ago. Boruto would fall to the ground and Kakashi would catch him. Boruto would wake up and ask what happened. And for the sake of Boruto and perhaps the entire land of waves, he wouldn't tell him right now. He would instead help him up only to discover that the bridge is now being rushed by Gato's men. And at their center is Gato himself, with his hands on the necks of both Tsunami and Inari. He commands the builders to stop building the bridge and the leaf shinobi to retreat, elsewise he'll kill both Inari and Tsunami. Having no choice, they retreat with the builders. They take refuge in Tazuna's home with him. Kakashi confirms that the mission is a failure and tells them to ready to leave for the leaf in the morning, but Boruto would buck this. We can't leave the people like this, not with that bastard in control. Kakashi would say that they have no other choice. Boruto would grunt, but when Kakashi puts his foot down, Boruto goes to bed. That night, however, he sneaks out of the house and makes his way under cover of night to the bridge where he sees that Gato's men are already considering blowing up the bridge to halt its creation. Boruto had managed to use the techniques Kakashi had taught him to run across the surface of the water, stealthily making it past Gato's men. Upon reaching the other side, he would find a warehouse where Gato's men were based. He didn't know for certain if Inari and Tsunami were there, but he assumed that if they were anywhere, they must be in there. Acting on the hunch, he keeps low and sneaks up to the warehouse. He would throw a rock, causing it to pop off the side of the wall, drawing one of the guard's attention. Boruto would appear behind him and put him in a chokehold. Once the guard was out, he would sneak up the side of the warehouse and look in. Sitting in two chairs towards the center, quietly, was Inari with his mother. Boruto would sneak in and make his way over to them. He would tell them to keep quiet and would pull a kunai and cut the rope, but Gato expected this. Waraji and Zori would appear out of the shadows to attack Boruto, but Boruto would launch back and defend himself. He would duel with the two samurai, outclassed. He'd form a shadow clone, but Zori and Waraji were still able to deal with him. Boruto is beginning to think he might just die here, but to his surprise, a pair of kunai come down and strike Zori and Waraji, pinning them to one of the nearby crates, only to be kicked through by a set of feet. Kakashi stood there, having used shadow clone jutsu to attack them. Boruto would smile. Kakashi sensei. Kakashi would look over at his genin. We'll talk about this later. Kakashi would help free Inari and Tsunami, but the battle drew the attention of Gato and his men. Gato would stand there, gripping his cane. My, what I would do to have a pair of shinobi like you on my payroll. Kakashi would decline it, and the four of them would take off running. Surely you had a plan to get out of this, didn't you, Boruto? Boruto would laugh. Actually, I did. Gato and his men would come out and see four figures crossing the bridge. Stop them, he would shout. They would chase the figures across the bridge, only for it to be revealed that the four were shadow clones. On the roof of the warehouse stood Boruto and Kakashi, each carrying Inari and Tsunami on their backs, respectively. Boruto would smile. He would raise his fingers as suddenly the paper bombs he had attached to explosives on the bottom of the bridge would go off, taking the whole bridge down and Gato's men with it. Boruto would let off a nose flick in pride and look to Kakashi who would be rubbing his temples. You just completed Gato's job for him. Boruto would look back. Well, yeah, but now the villagers are free of him. They can rebuild the bridge, and besides, Kaiza has been avenged. 
Inari's eyes would light up and he would catch a glimpse of Kaiza in Boruto, and at that moment the young boy would know that heroes do exist. Boruto would return to the Hidden Leaf the next day. It would take the villagers over a year to reconstruct the bridge after its absolute and total collapse thanks to Boruto, but also thanks to Boruto, Gato and his men were no longer a threat to them, meaning they could work quickly and without threat. Unable to repay the debt they owed him, they decided to name the bridge the Great Boruto Bridge, after the brave shinobi who taught the tiny village that heroes still existed in this world. Upon returning to the village, Kakashi brings Boruto to the Hokage's residence where they would explain to him what had happened, and about the Nine Tails and its history. They would inform Boruto that he's currently the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails and that he had lost control on the bridge against Zabuza and Haku. Boruto would ask what happened. The Hokage would say it's possibly an error in the seal, or possibly it has to do with Kurama and Boruto possessing some odd connection. But the best he can think to do is add another seal. Hiruzen asks Boruto to lay down, and he would then apply another seal. A form of the five element seal like Orochimaru used in the original timeline, but only this seal is perfected by the third Hokage. It causes sudden pain that takes Boruto's breath away, and then causes him to pass out. Hiruzen explains that this seal will further cut off the Ninetales chakra from Boruto, which should make it a bit more controllable, and makes it less likely for Boruto to lose control to Kurama. After this, Boruto would awaken in his apartment where he would make it out to join his team for their lower class missions. However, especially after what he witnessed from his team during the Land of Waves mission, he feels they're completely ready for the Chunin exams. Most everything happens the same way through the first exam. However, at the second exam, Boruto does not have access to the Ninetales' power, meaning Sasuke gets hammered by Orochimaru's snake and he barely fights back. Orochimaru would still brand him and take his leave. The difference here is that Boruto is still awake as opposed to Naruto who would also be out right now. This means when Team Dosu comes to attack Sakura, Boruto is ready and Lee and the others might not need to help them. Now, I said they don't need to, this doesn't mean that they don't, because Lee does have a thing for Sakura. Most of this happens the same as before, and they make it to the tower at the center of the Forest of Death. After this comes the exhibition matches. Boruto, already having witnessed the power of the other shinobi, begins to doubt his ability to beat them. He wishes to become a Chunin though, and believes that his actions in the Land of Waves is proof that he deserves it. He's offered a strange device that allows him to mimic high-level jutsu without any hand signs or training. He takes it and believes it will help him gain an advantage. Besides, the rules don't really say anything against this, do they? No, seriously, do they? I forget. I know it was against the rules in the tuning exams during Boruto, but I forget if it was specifically disallowed here. Either way though, he fights against Kiba and Akamaru and uses a few of these jutsu, but when seeing how dedicated Kiba and Akamaru is and after hearing how hard they work to get this far, Boruto is absolutely disgusted in himself. He would remove the device and cast it aside, resolving to beat Kiba and Akamaru in battle fairly. They would fight, and it would be fairly close, but Boruto does soundly win. Most of the other matches go just the same. Boruto would then get his month off. Kakashi would still train Sasuke, and in the end, Boruto would train under Jiraiya. Jiraiya would know that Boruto is Minato's son, and as such is the Ninetales Jinchuriki. He would ask why he has a rather refined 5-element seal over his 8-trigram seal. He mentions that the odd-numbered seal on top of this even-numbered seal creates an imbalance that doesn't allow him to make use of his tailed beast's power. Boruto would explain what had happened. Jiraiya would understand and note that if it was the Hokage's decision, then he must respect it. While he believes Boruto can learn to use Karama's power, it's apparent that he isn't quite ready for that, so he opts to help Boruto learn something else. Something far better. After the month off, they return to the Leaf and enter the stadium where the next matches are set to take place. Boruto is meditating when Hinata comes up to him and tells him that she believes in him. Boruto is a bit worried about his battle against Neji, but he resolves to try his best and is interested in how his secret weapon will function against the Byakugan. The match would get ready to start. Boruto would just be standing there when Neji gets ready. The match would begin and Neji would rush forward. However, Boruto would open his eyes to display a set of orange toad-like pupils as orange pigmentation covers the sides of his eyes. Boruto is instantly quicker and stronger, able to outdo even Neji. Neji can see him, but he can't touch him. That being said, he can still somewhat parry Boruto's strikes. However, Boruto has a specific type of technique Jiraiya taught him which allows him to strike Neji, even if his fist never makes contact. This special ability is taught by the toads of Mount Myoboku and is brought to you exclusively by Pervy Sage. Hiruzen would stand in shock. Is that Sage Mode? Where did Boruto learn that? Ebisu would tell the Hokage about Jiraiya. Hiruzen would sit down and smile. He would further watch the battle. Boruto would continue to fight against Neji. 
However, his control over Sage Mode is very weak, and his Chakra Well also isn't as deep as it could be, meaning that his Sage Mode doesn't last very long. Boruto would flip back and sit there, attempting to gather more nature energy, realizing that this is the downfall of Sage Mode. He attempts to flee from Neji and gather even more, however, Neji seems to be understanding the downsides of Sage Mode as well, which means he isn't going to let Boruto gather it up. He chases Boruto, but eventually stops short of him by a ways. Boruto's confused. He'd ask, aren't you going to come any closer? Neji would smile. I don't need to. You're already within my range. Suddenly, an 8 trigram symbol would appear on the ground. Neji would smile. 8 trigrams, 64 palms, 2 palms, 4 palms. Boruto would be struck by these attacks, completely astounded by the speed of it all. 8 palms, 16 palms, 32 palms, 64 palms. Boruto would be struck by them all. He would then be struck in the solar plexus by a final shot that puts him into the wall. Boruto falls off the wall and lays there, paralyzed, many of his vital tenketsu having been struck. It seemed Neji had a secret technique up his sleeve too. Boruto is taken to the infirmary where the medical nin would help him recover. It comes to Sasuke's turn to fight, but he isn't there. Normally, he would be disqualified, but given that everyone was looking forward to his battle with Gara, a special exception was made. He eventually arrives and proceeds to fight, but before their battle could reach completion, Kabuto puts everyone in the stadium to sleep. However, Sakura wakes up, and she finds that Konoha is being attacked by Orochimaru. Hokage Sarutobi is facing off against his former pupil, all while Sasuke is already after Gara. Sakura finds Boruto and begs him to help. Boruto accepts this and heads out. He would eventually catch up to Sasuke and see him facing off against a massive sand monster, only later known as Shukaku. Sasuke is defeated. Boruto would gather nature energy and attack Shukaku, but to no avail. He would notice that Gara is on its head, and Sasuke would exclaim that Gara is asleep. That's how Shukaku appeared. It took over when Gara fell asleep. Sakura attempts to heal Sasuke with some of what she's learned during the tuning exams. Boruto faces off against Shukaku but finds that none of his strikes are doing much. This beast is made of sand and the force doesn't translate well due to how loose it is. And what's worse, Boruto is still weak from his battle with Neji, meaning his sage mode gives out not too long after. He needs to recharge but Shukaku won't give him the chance. Sasuke would recognize this and after having been healed by Sakura, he and she would both tag in to fight against Shukaku while Boruto replenishes his chakra. They last a while but are ultimately defeated. Boruto knows there's only one chance to end this, and it's to strike Gara and wake him up. To that effect, he summons three shadow clones. One clone grabs the other and throws it into the air, while the third grabs Boruto and does the same. The third clone throws Boruto at the airborne clone. Upon collision, Boruto would use this clone to push off, which would cause all three to puff away as Boruto launches himself forward to strike Gara, waking him up and causing Shukaku to be resealed. They hit the ground, both out of energy. Boruto looks to Gara. So, you have someone living in you too? Can I ask? Does everyone hate you too? Boruto would laugh. If nobody else cares for us, we gotta care for each other, right? He'd then pass out. Tamari and Konkuro would show up and grab their brother and flee. Boruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all spend some time in the hospital but eventually get out. That is when Boruto is informed of Lord Third's death. He attends the funeral and is then sent with Jiraiya to fetch Tsunade and replace him. Along the way, they're met with Itachi and Kisame. However, Sasuke arrives to get vengeance, but instead gets spanked by Big Bro. Jiraiya manages to buy some time until they're forced to retreat when Mike Guy shows up. They further find Tsunade, who refuses to become Hokage, claiming it's a dumb position. Honestly, Boruto agrees. The position is nothing more than a title given to people. Despite it being reputed as the strongest ninja, it's obvious that they aren't. If Hiruzen truly were the strongest shinobi, then Orochimaru wouldn't have been able to kill him. Despite that, he knows they need a Hokage. He asks her to reconsider because the Leaf needs a leader nonetheless. She asks who he is, and Jiraiya responds with, My student. His name is Boruto Uzumaki. Tsunade would stand and say that she wasn't about to become Hokage. After this, Jiraiya continues to train Boruto. It's then that Shizune informs them of what has happened. Tsunade went to meet with Orochimaru, who needs her to heal his arms, but in actuality, she's going to kill him. Jiraiya and Boruto race to meet her. Most of this battle goes the same, as Kabuto would still cut Boruto's heart muscles and chakra pathways. However, Tsunade heals him. Boruto would then stand and look to Kabuto. I've been waiting for someone to try this on. He would form a Rasengan, but to his disdain, the Rasengan isn't much larger than a marble. Kabuto laughs. What the hell is that? You plan to beat me with that? Boruto would growl. He would throw it at Kabuto. Kabuto would flinch a bit, but then the orb seemingly evaporates, and he begins to laugh. 
Tsunade sighs, wondering why Jiraiya thought it was appropriate to teach someone of Boruto's level such a high-class technique. But suddenly, Kabuto is struck by the Rasengan. Boruto's confused, but he begins to understand this. It was his vanishing Rasengan. The rest of the battle after this goes the same. Tsunade would return to the Leaf with them and take the role of Hokage. Sasuke would be boiling on Itachi and Boruto both when he gets his butt handed to him by the Sound 4. They offer to take him to Orochimaru to grow stronger. He accepts and leaves the village. A team is put together to track them down. While the others face off against the Sound 4, Boruto reaches the Valley of the End where he asks Sasuke what he's doing. Will he really abandon the village for this? Sasuke says he will. Boruto says he'll drag him back to the Leaf if he has to. The two proceed to fight, Boruto with Sage Mode and Sasuke with his Cursed Seal of Heaven. Boruto immediately identifies this seal as using Sage Chakra. It's a twisted rip off of Sage Mode, you know, Boruto exclaims. Sasuke attacks him anyway. Boruto is proven to be still yet superior to Sasuke in terms of strength and speed. However, Sasuke proves to lack the fatal flaw of Boruto's Sage Mode. He doesn't need to stand still to regain his chakra. It automatically refuels itself in battle. Boruto loses his form and Sasuke bodies him. From here, Sasuke leaves for Orochimaru's hideout. Boruto, along with the rest of the Sasuke recovery team, are returned to the Leaf when Kakashi catches up to them. Some are admitted to the hospital. They tell Boruto that Sasuke left the village and Boruto sighs. From this point on, Boruto goes off to train with Jiraiya. Jiraiya states it may take three years to complete it, though they do manage to do so in two and a half. All the while, Jiraiya boils on the five element seal that the third Hokage placed on him. Jiraiya at first was fine with leaving it on, but ever since Konoha was attacked by Orochimaru and the third Hokage was killed, Jiraiya begins to wonder if it might be best to remove the seal. If he removed the five element seal, he might be able to help Boruto get a power up, especially during this time when Konoha was in a bad spot. So after a lengthy debate with Boruto, the two decide to remove the five element seal. They remove the seal and Jiraiya attempts to teach Boruto how to channel the Tailed Beast's power, but the moment he tries to, Boruto's will is overpowered by the Ninetales, and he quickly goes straight into his version 2 cloak. There it attacks Jiraiya, and Jiraiya fights back. Jiraiya ends up nearly killed by it, but in the end he manages to subdue it and return Boruto to his base form. But Boruto's in bad shape as well, his body red from the constant destruction and regeneration. The cellular damage is pretty bad, but Jiraiya is not in very good shape himself. He manages to get himself and Boruto to the hospital where they attempt to be healed. During this time, Jiraiya opts to put a new seal on top of Boruto's 8 trigrams, but instead of using the 5 element seal, he instead uses the evil sealing method, which would keep the seal closed but also allow Boruto to access the power at any time he should need it. They recover during this time, and once this was done, they return to their training where Boruto instead focuses on Sage Mode. Jiraiya warns him to be careful of the Ninetales and that he should only use its power when he's certain that his willpower is strong enough to retain control. The Ninetales would remain sealed within him, but if the Ninetales' consciousness overshadowed Boruto's, it would be able to take command of his body. And even in a sealed and weakened state, the Ninetales would cause incredible damage. And so Boruto decides not to use it unless it's absolutely an emergency. He continues to train his Sage Mode. After two and a half years, Boruto would return to the Hidden Leaf Village where he'd catch up with Sakura and Kakashi. Here, they would likely try to do the bell test again for old time's sake. Of course, this likely would go the same as it did with Naruto, ending with Boruto threatening to spoil the next Icha Icha novel. Boruto has always had a mischievous side to him, and would be willing to use some dirty tactics to win, so it's not beyond the realm of possibility that Boruto would do the same. Some things just never change, like father like son. After a while, word reaches Konoha that Gara has been kidnapped by the Akatsuki. In response, they send Team 7 to rescue Gara. During this time, they would meet up with Gara's siblings as well as Chiyo. They would head for the Akatsuki's lair where they'd meet up with Team Guy who were sent on a mission to aid Team Kakashi. They would find it too late with Gara already dead. Boruto and Kakashi would chase after Deidara who's attempting to flee with Gara's body, all while Chiyo and Sakura face off against Sasori. Upon seeing Gara's lifeless body, Boruto would attack Deidara, telling him he would make him pay for what he's done. Boruto would activate his Sage Mode quickly where he would use this power to beat Deidara down but he's frustrated to find that it's merely a clay clone. Boruto is upset seeing that Gara is dead and that his murderer got away. Boruto would apologize to Gara that he hadn't shown up sooner and reflects on his life and the similarities he shared with Boruto. But there is no time to waste. They return to try and help in the fight against Sasori only to find that Sasori has already been defeated. Upon seeing Gara's lifeless remains, Chiyo feels guilt and revives him using the one's own life reincarnation technique to bring him back to life at the expense of her own. Boruto laments this but is glad to see Gara alive again, which he displays with a hug. Boruto would promise Gara to not let them hurt him again. They would return to the leaf where Sakura would explain Sasori's words and how he planned to meet with Kabuto in a place in the hidden village in the grass known as Tenchi Bridge. With their new Jonin, Yamato, overseeing them in Kakashi's place, as well as the introduction of Sai to Team 7, they head out. During this time, most of Team 7 and Sai don't mix well. 
while Boruto never physically attacks him, he would admit that he talks a lot of crap about Sasuke and is awfully annoying because of such. When they reach the bridge, Yamato uses the transformation technique in an attempt to fool Kabuto, but Orochimaru shows up and both he and Kabuto see through this. They had intended to kill Sasori anyway, so Team 7 did them a favor. They attack Yamato still, and a fight erupts on the bridge. Boruto would enter Sage Mode and engage Orochimaru in battle, his power being enough to push the Jonin back, who would then commend Boruto on doing the one thing Orochimaru never could, which was to attain Sage Mode. Boruto doesn't seem so satisfied with this statement though, instead answering it with a question. Where is Sasuke? Orochimaru would force them back onto the bridge and then destroy it, causing them to fall. The only one who does not fall is Sai, who opts to join Orochibaru in hopes of growing close enough to Sasuke that he might kill him. Meanwhile, Boruto, Sakura, and Yamato fight against the current to get back to land, where they attempt to catch up. Sai fails to kill Sasuke, and due to the relationship Boruto and Sakura have with him, Sai is convinced not to assassinate him. They eventually arrive and meet up with Sasuke for the first time in nearly three years. Sasuke wishes to show them that they mean very little to him, and so he would attempt to incapacitate them. He would prepare to kill Boruto, and Boruto would be speechless. He would ask how Sasuke could do this to them. Boruto would awaken his Sage Mode and attack Sasuke with it, forcing Sasuke to awaken his Cursed Seal of Heaven's second stage. Boruto would shout at him, We were bros! How could you just throw that away? For so long we lived and died with each other. We all three became one unit. How can you throw that away like we're nothing? And Sasuke would reply without any sign of emotion, Because you meant nothing. You were a stepping stone, a phase in my life. Boruto would shake his head, No! We meant more! You saved my life from Haku on the bridge and could have died. You were willing to sacrifice everything for me. You can't say our bond never mattered. Sasuke would smile. You're right. For a while, it did matter. And for a moment, I nearly chose you guys over my revenge. But no longer. I've cast off my bonds to you in exchange for power. You mean nothing to me now. Let me demonstrate that. Sasuke would then attack Boruto with killing intent. Boruto could sense it, and in his anger, he also clashes with killing intent. This goes on for a while, and Boruto finds that he's nearly evenly matched with Sasuke. Eventually, Orochimaru calls out to Sasuke and tells him that they don't have much time to waste, and that Konoha reinforcements would be on their way now. With that, Sasuke would state that his battle with Boruto isn't over, and Boruto would say, You're damn right it's not. Sasuke would disappear. Boruto would then return to the village with Team 7. Boruto would be silent, thinking about this over a bowl of Ichiraku Ramen's daily special. Sakura would ask what's on his mind, but Boruto would look to Sakura and tell her that there's no saving Sasuke. He would tell her that he had every intention of killing them, and that he would have too if Boruto hadn't stopped him. He tells Sakura that he's sorry, but he can't keep his promise to her. If he ever brings Sasuke back to Konoha, it will be in a casket, because that's what Sasuke will drive him to do. After this, Kakashi, having recovered, brings his team together to discuss the Tenchi Bridge recon mission, where he comes to realize that Boruto will eventually need to face off against Sasuke, which may result in a deadly confrontation in which Boruto will need everything he can to defeat Sasuke. So he begins to train Boruto. Together, they would discover that Boruto's natural chakra affinity is lightning release, just like Kakashi. Kakashi would attempt to teach him the Chidori and would explain what it was. The Chidori was a failed attempt to add lightning release to a Rasengan. He tells Boruto that if he can manage to perfect this, he may create a brand new jutsu that would be incredibly powerful. So, for a time, Boruto would train his chakra control as well as his Rasengan and the Chidori, attempting to find the perfect middle ground. It's then that they're informed of the death of Asuma Saratobi at the hands of Hidan and Kakazu. Team 7 are called up for duty. Boruto would show up just in time to save Kakashi from Kakazu, and Boruto would use his new technique. The lightning release, Arashikami. This is the perfect mesh of lightning release and the Rasengan. In striking Kakazu with it, the crackling orb that doesn't seem too far different from ball lightning electrocutes and burns him, and completely fries his chakra pathway system, making him unable to use his jutsu. It's then that Kakashi would come in and deal the finishing blow with his chidori. However, this has a kickback, as Boruto's arm is burned and his chakra pathway system in his arm is also fried, making it hard for him to use jutsu himself. It's this that leads to the lightning release Arashikami to being branded a kinjutsu. Orochimaru by this time is killed by Sasuke, and word reaches Konoha about this. Team 7 and 8 form up into an 8-man squad to track Sasuke or find Itachi, Sasuke's target. Boruto isn't very optimistic about this. After running into Kabuto, Boruto would run into Itachi who only wishes to talk. Itachi asks Boruto what he would do if Sasuke ever made a move against Konoha. Boruto would reply with, whatever I have to do to protect the village. Itachi seems a little upset with this answer, though he doesn't mark it as the wrong answer. It just wasn't what he was hoping to hear. Itachi would then disappear in a flock of crows. 
Boruto would continue searching for Sasuke and Itachi, but they're held back by Tobi, who battles them until such a time as Zetsu informs him that Itachi has been killed by Sasuke. They then retreat. Having turned up nothing useful, they're forced to retreat back to Konoha. He's then summoned to see Tsunade, who proceeds to break the news to him. Jiraiya has been killed in Amegakure when he was searching for the Akatsuki. Boruto in that moment seems to go through the first three stages of grief. First, he can't believe that it's true. He believes that there's no way that anyone could kill Pervy Sage, but Tsunade assures him that it's true. Boruto would then accuse Tsunade, saying it was her fault for sending him in there, and that she shouldn't have sent him alone. And during this time, Tsunade just lets him speak. She knows it must be hard on him as it is on her. Boruto would then start saying that there must be some way to revive him. In the world of such ninjutsu, there has to be a way. He asks about Chiyo's technique, and Tsunade shakes her head. Jiraiya is gone, Boruto. You need to accept that. Remember who he was, and move on with that memory in your heart. Boruto would storm out. Much like Naruto, he would cry over a popsicle. He would eat half and let the other half melt. Boruto's crying wouldn't be as neat as Naruto's though. There would be much sniffling and many expressions and runny noses. It wouldn't be long after that that Boruto would be sent to Mount Myoboku to finish the last stages of perfecting Sage Mode. He would go and train for a while with the Toad Sages until he'd be summoned to the center of Konoha because of the attack on the village by the Akatsuki leader named Pain. Boruto would fight against the Six Paths of Pain, managing to actually defeat them, having completely mastered Sage Mode. He would track down Nagato and go in. He would berate Nagato about killing Jiraiya and ask him why he would do that. Nagato would explain that he was in the way and needed to be dealt with. Boruto would ask him how he could merely kill the man who raised and taught him, and Nagato would claim it to be for the greater good. Boruto would ask how killing a mostly innocent man and destroying a village full of civilians could be considered the greater good, and Nagato would say that it was all in the name of peace, that he needed the nine-tailed beast to awaken the ultimate weapon. He would give the world a taste of this weapon and show them that fighting against him is futile. He would teach them peace through pain, and ruin their taste in war by showing them how ugly it could be. Boruto told him that this was madness. He agreed that war wasn't good, but stopping war by committing murder would never solve anything. It would only cause people to hate and rise against him, which would in turn start a new war which would then consume the world. If he wanted peace, he needed to do it through love, like Jiraiya tried to. Nagato would listen and see how obviously torn up by this Boruto was. Boruto would continue. The only way to teach people to forget war is to teach them to care for others, to unite them under a smile. Nagato thought about all this, and after continuing to debate with Boruto about it, he decided to trust Boruto's views on it, and he would bring everyone back that he had killed in Konoha at the expense of his own life, and Conan takes his body away. Boruto is then celebrated as the hero of the leaf. Tsunade has fallen into a coma though, and Danzo Shimura has become the interim Hokage until either Tsunade recovers, or according to his own plans, he becomes Hokage instead. A five kage summit is called and Danzo attends. Meanwhile, Sakura comes to the realization that Sasuke could start another war and get many people killed. Knowing that it's their responsibility to deal with Sasuke, Sakura invites Boruto to come along, knowing that his sage mode would help them track Sasuke better. They set off to find Sasuke. During this time, Sasuke crashes the summit and manages to kill Danzo. Sakura and Boruto arrive with their team to face off against Sasuke. Sasuke asks if they intend to stand in his way in regards to his revenge against Konoha, and Boruto says that he won't let Sasuke do it. Sasuke, by this time, has lost his curse mark, but he's attained a Mongekyo Sharingan. Together, Sakura and Boruto face off against Sasuke, and in the end, together they manage to kill him. After this, it would be revealed that the Fourth Shinobi World War has been declared and that Boruto must be sent away to protect the Ninetales from the Akatsuki. They send Boruto to a remote island in the Land of Lightning for what they tell him is training. During this time, he meets Killer B, who Boruto thinks is pretty cool. He enjoys the same type of music that Killer B is always quoting and using to form his sentences. Killer B and Boruto immediately hit it off, and so Killer B tries to help Boruto to control the Ninetales energy. He has Boruto sit in front of a waterfall where he must confront his inner demons if he wishes to proceed deeper. Boruto sits there until his darker half appears. This darker half represents the hatred and resentment Boruto harbored, as well as the pain of betrayal that he felt due to Sasuke, and even further, the guilt at failing to bring him back. You were never a good friend to Sasuke, the darker half would say. Regardless of what he said or did, you know he tried to save you, meaning he cared about you at one point. And how do you repay him? With death. Boruto would tear up and know that he was right. Could he ever forgive himself? He began to think about all of it. He did this to save Konoha, but was that just an excuse? Did he really just give up? When it might have been possible to save Sasuke? There was no telling anymore. It's just the way things happened. He would always feel bad about it, and Boruto still resented the village for what they had done to him. But he would still give his all for them, even if he needed to die to do so. And that's why he was here. Boruto was here to bear this all for everyone. 
He killed Sasuke to safeguard them after Sasuke killed the Hokage. Boruto wasn't perfect, but he knew that what he was here for was merely to gain the strength required to save the village. After debating within himself, Boruto came to realize that these things would always be a part of him, and that was okay. He would bear any darkness for the leaf, and with that, he was able to enter the temple. There, Killer B would help him get through his inability to control his tailed beast. He would help Boruto face Korama head first, in which Boruto would prove that his will was far greater than it had once been. Not only did he manage to push Korama back, but take some of its chakra too, allowing him to achieve Ninetales Chakra Mode. It's then that he senses the war and leaves the island to catch up. He would eventually show up to the war front, and most of this would happen almost exactly the same until the point that Sasuke would show up, which he can't because he's dead. This means it's up to Boruto and the rest of the allied shinobi forces to defeat Obito. This is where things get tricky, because without Sasuke, I'm not so sure if it's possible for him, even in Ninetales Chakra Mode with Sage Mode added on, to even scratch Obito in that same way. But for all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the Sage of Six Paths appears to Boruto and offers him a full portion of his Six Paths Senjutsu. Would Boruto be able to do it then? Well, yeah, probably. He could probably manage to pull the tailed beasts out of Obito, but then again, round 2 begins with Madara's revival. However, here's the thing. Given that Boruto has awakened his six path sage mode earlier, would Madara even have a shot against Boruto? If Madara cannot, then the war ends there, with the ghetto statue likely being hidden somewhere in the world where only select people could know where it was. If Madara managed to reclaim the Ten Tails, then likely Madara could hold his own until Kaguya revives, in which things get dark. I don't think Boruto can beat her alone. He definitely can't use the Six Paths Chibaku Tensei. The only thing I can think is that he would probably use the Kohaku no Johei or Beni Hisago that was used to revive the Ten Tails the first time to seal her away. Besides that, I don't know if he could beat her, but I'm not in the mood to write a tragedy, so we're gonna say that he has access to these two jars and uses one to seal away Kaguya. Of course, that's only if he doesn't flat out solo Madara before he can use his abilities to take the Ten Tails' power. After this, some time would pass and peace would return to the world. Due to the war, mutual respect was achieved by all villages, which Boruto thought was funny. Both the idealistic belief that love will bring people together, as well as the extreme belief that pain would do so, both turned out to be wrong. And right. The admiration and love fostered between villages could only have been achieved through mutual respect earned through the Fourth Shinobi World War. But now it was up to the villages to choose to nurse these feelings forever, or they would risk returning to war and hate. Eventually, time would pass and Hanabi Hyuga would be kidnapped by Toneri Otsutsuki to take her Byakugan in the hopes of awakening the Tensaigon. He would attempt to take Hinata as his wife and bring the moon crashing down upon Earth to destroy all life thereon. It would be up to Hinata and Toneri to repopulate the Earth, but that's not something Boruto would allow. He would go to the moon with his team, and more than likely, he would manage to defeat Toneri. I mean, if Naruto could, so could Boruto. Naruto doesn't really have anything that Boruto doesn't. After this, they would return to Earth. Now, normally, Naruto and Hinata would get married, except Naruto is now Boruto, and because it would be super weird to have Boruto marry his main timeline counterpart's mom, I've elected not to do this. Instead, Boruto will marry Sakura. I mean, she's still single, right? She doesn't have Sasuke anymore, so it's really just perfect for Boruto to marry her. They would then have two children, Naruto and Sarada Uzumaki. And then the events of Naruto, Boruto Next Generations could occur. And that's all, folks. What did you think of our little what if? Did you enjoy the concept of Boruto replacing Naruto? I tried to keep Boruto's personality. I hope you found it interesting. Of course, I'm certain that my point of view on how these events would take place isn't the only one. I'm interested to know what you think would happen and what things you think would be different. Leave a comment down below and tell me. While you're at it, show your support for the channel by giving us a thumbs up and a subscription. Until then, peace. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.